Welcome to Icy Frostbite Edition. I'm just going right into the game. Uh, you're not going to spend too much time doing much because uh, last time I recorded, I didn't get the audio. The game's audio coming through. Speedcraft. Um, Say that. Exploration. Take a low exploration. High scavenging. I'm running out of spots. I'll give me a three bow, and I got two points left. I don't want to waste that though. Let me think. Please you to see. Persuade and intimidate other people is, might be kind of useful. I'm. Um, it's. Maybe I'll go lower there. Okay, I don't have one of these. Yeah, okay, four bows would be pretty good. Oh, do I want that? Um. Yeah, I think I'll just stay with that. And. As a parent, I'll go with. Went as an old guy my first time. I'll go with this guy. Oh, okay. It has been two years since you lost your memory. After freaking no slide, your saviors from that day are now your nomad family. Today is a day just like any other. You are out hunting in the forest with your companion and good friends at home. And uh, because I've got a toaster, I've got to wait. There you go. You wake up in the woods, surrounded by snow and massive old trees. A cold wind is blowing in your face, and your arms and legs are chilled to the bone. You feel a gentle tap on your shoulder. It's Jerome waking you up. Wake up! A beast took the bait. We'd set. He smiles at you and whispers, Come on! You feel confused, and the white glowing snow distorts you, but you manage to get on your feet. The old man looks at you, with a friendly smile, waiting for your brain to start working again. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna say... I'm not gonna say that, that one. I'll go with that. What do we have here? Just look at that majestic deer. Today might be our lucky day. Uh, let's wait for it to come closer. Lured by your bait, the deer moves closer. It's large be it's a large beast and it could provide food for your family for several days. Okay. So do either let Jerome suit or should I suit? I gave myself a bow this time. Let me get closer. Jerome smiles at you and lowers his bow. It's all yours, but if you miss, I may have to make another plan for a dinner. Success. You slowly draw your bow, pointing the arrow at the deer's head. You hold your breath, then suit. It's a perfect shot, and the deer falls on the snow with a muffled sound. Perfect shot. That's exactly why I wanted you to come with me. Let's go grab our dinner. Jerome starts walking towards the deer's carcass. You step closer to the deer. The snow under the dead beast is slowly turning red. Today's dinner will be a feast. Let's head back. He looks up at the sun. It's not even noon yet. Hector will find some other chores for us to do. You can be sure of that. You tie the deer to a strong pole and head back to camp. Jerome keeps talking the whole way back, clearly excited by the successful hunt. Okay, then tutorial stuff. The map is divided into nodes. Click on a nearby node to move towards it. Moving will consume food, and running out of food will quickly lead to the death of your whole group. <coughs> Excuse me. Here we go. To the check, to the question mark. You can already see the tents of your camp. You follow Jerome, then drop the deer to the ground. Well, we are going to eat for dinner. Uh, well, we are going to eat deer for dinner. Jerome smiles and puts his hand on your shoulder. Well, well, well. Suddenly, Goran appears behind you. You brought back a week's worth of food. Where are the others, Goran? You see Hector coming out of his tent. He doesn't look too well. They're hunting south of here. You know Irma, so you simply can't stand doing nothing. Let's see. Does he look any more sick than me? Uh, let's see. Well, is there anything else we can do? Well, this deer isn't going to butcher itself. Let's get started and maybe we'll have time for dinner for another run. Blah. Leave it to- leave that to me. 
I'm stuck here anyway because my ankle still hurts and all I can do is limp around. I wonder if that's going to be important later. Go for another run. Try to get as much as possible. There's a long road ahead and I don't want to hunt every day. Let's stock up on, stock up on food while, now while we can. Jerome looks at the sun. We have time, so I guess we should go for another one. So what do I do on there? Uh, let's see. Mm, yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. Just don't fall asleep this time. I am the old guy. I should be the one allowed to randomly go to sleep. Come on, let's go. You take the lead this time. Okay, so it's me and Jerome again. We're walking this way. We're walking this way. Now we're in the forest. Each node can have different places in it, in which you can scare in the ten forest food. Uh, I'll just kind of skim this. So I'm click on the forest icon. Yeah, I've done this three times. First time was a practice. Second time, missed, messed up getting the game audio. So now this is the third time. I've done this all before. Hey, damage meter. The damage is down here. The stuff you can get is up here, I guess. Maybe you could scavenge multiple times. This forest seems relatively open and easy to explore, so hunting should be both simple and safe. Okay, this time I've... huh. This is actually different from last time, and I think I had the same scavenge level. But I get more meat this time. Huh. Or did I? Though I guess I'm not too sure yet, I might have forgotten. You're walking and looking around, hoping to see some movement. Then Jerome puts his hand on your shoulder and begins to speak. Mm, they seem to do that a lot. <clears throat> it's getting late. We should go back. If Hector wants to stock up on food so much, it's because we're going to be traveling for at least a week. And we don't want to be tired. Tomorrow we might have to walk for the entire day. Let's see... Uh, he's always reminding me that he's old. So I think I'll call him old. I think you're just getting old. Jerome smiles. Yes, and you should respect the wisdom of your elders. Yeah, well, you're right. Let's get a decent night's sleep now. I'm going to be kind of snarky. Fine, let's go back. Let's see if the others. Let's see if the others found something. Hector is not the only one getting tired of stopping every two days to hunt for food. So that's one step. Food goes down to fourteen. Yes, and now we're here. Finally, I really need some rest. You take a look around the camp. Your companions are talking and taking care of dinner. Looks like everyone made it back safe. Gorn approaches you. So, how did it go? Uh, I think it went pretty well. But maybe not super well. Not too bad, we brought back more food. Come near the fire. Dinner is almost ready. You will need it for tomorrow. Hector seems eager to move out as a oh, Hector seems eager to move out as soon as possible in the morning. Wrong voice. So you take your seat near the fire, exchanging, exchanging greetings with the others. Irma, Goran's wife, starts giving out plates of cooked meat to the group. Let's all be thankful to our hunters for the meat we're about to eat. Hector coughs after speaking. Will you tell us where we are headed? Not far from here. Tomorrow we will go to a nearby town for scavenging. I hope to find something until uh, useful for our upcoming travels there. No, I mean, where are we going to end up in the long run? Where will we spend the winter? Ah, oh, there's a coughing sound. I just needed to raise the volume. We will travel south, far from any common route. We must get away from the plains. Hector coughs again. The plains are becoming dangerous. And I'm not talking about all the bandit activity. There are rumors about the Red Horsemen prowling the area in increasingly growing numbers. What does it mean? I'm tired of traveling without a purpose. We have always stayed in the plains. Why should we travel to unknown lands? I don't think I like that voice. <laughs> don't worry. It's all snow and cold just like here. You won't be missing much. I don't care what we do. If the planes have become that dangerous, then we should probably leave. They never tell us his name until later, do they? That guy, that, well, uh, his name will appear. I won't 
put my children at risk without a reason. And traveling away from any known route is a huge risk. Especially when the only thing we know is that we're going south. Uh, let's see. I don't know if Hector's never wrong. Hmm. Okay, does it really matter? The white wasteland is all the same. Nothing but snow and danger everywhere. We're nomads. Traveling is part of our life. That is true. For what we know, the white wasteland has no end, and the mantle covers the whole world. I have the right to know where me, my husband, and my children are going to end up. South is not enough. I want to know what we are going to face. There is no reason to worry about that. We've already been south of here. Jerome turns to you. Do, re do you remember where we found our friend? Where we're getting close to that area. Is he talking about the... Uh, found our friend? Is he talking about me? Uh, let's see. I think I'll go with... Then it should be fine. We're not traveling through completely unknown lands. And what are we going to do next? Do we have to place... Do we have a place to spend the winter? Or are we just running away from the plains without a real purpose? Hector is becoming annoyed. I already said that the plains are becoming dangerous. You don't want re a Red Horseman clan to attack us and enslave the survivors, do you? I might be mixing voices now. It's better to walk on the mantle for the entire winter than to face them. The sooner we run away, the safer we'll be. Alright, okay. I'm pretty sure if it's already frozen, it's always winter. I'll get this kill. Yeah, yeah, it's probably the best solution for us, so I'll just go with this. It's the best I found. I'm not eager to walk on unknown routes either, but at least we won't have to face the Red Horseman. Am I the only one with a working brain here? We'll be running into the unknown. And, um, let's see. Um, the unknown is better than certain death. At this point, this is the safest choice. Yeah, I think I'll go with that. Yeah, because no one ever got killed by not knowing what he was about to face. Do as you like, but I already know we're, we're all going to regret this. Irma goes inside her tent before giving anyone the chance to say anything. I'll talk to her. I'm worried too, but facing the Red Horseman scares me even more. She will understand eventually. Um, Hector again. Hector coughs a little before replying. I hope so. I don't want to discuss this ever again. Nothing of importance happens for the rest of the evening. You eventually go to bed to prepare yourself for the next day. You wake up in the morning, hearing voices coming from outside. Hector and the others are preparing the day, the plan for the day. Okay, people. We will now spread out in pairs and, and search for anything useful in that small town over there. Be especially on the lookout for any tools. Irma will stay here with the children and guard our stuff. If anything happens, scream. I will go with Jerome. Goran, you will go with Mark. Hector turns to you. And you will go with Demetra. I hope it won't be a waste of time. Goran puts on his backpack. I'm tired of seeing only empty buildings. Let's see. I'll ask about the family needs. Do we need anything in particular? Tools and anything we can sell or use. But I won't complain if you bring back an assault rifle. <coughs> the first time I played, I basically maxed out guns. And then I got to here and I thought I was really going to find a gun. And I didn't find a gun. And I didn't have any skill with any weapons. Let's ask about the area. It's an, uh, it's an ancient town, so there's a lot of buildings here. I hope we can find something to scavenge, something left behind. Uh, that's kind of all, let's go. Cool. Demetra nods at you. I'll follow your lead. And that was Irma's voice. Uh, let's see, we'll just, we'll just go to town. Okay, it's a farm with very little things and more danger than things. 
Scavenging is like hunting, but it is. Oh no, yeah, we basically know it's basically like hunting. There's a danger bar that has the same amount of danger as hunting. Yeah, it's basically the same. We'll just continue. All right, traveling through that one well, didn't really end. Yeah, I'm almost entirely sure I got two sewing kits last time. Uh, scavenging report. That's kind of where we are. We'll just take everything and go. It's close to nightfall. We should head back to the camp. Demetra stops in her tanks. I mean, in her tracks. Blah. I'm getting shivers all over, and it's not from the cold. There's something dark out there, waiting for us to close our eyes, so it may take us by surprise. <laughs> Who would I play? Uh, maybe I'll ask her what does he mean? What do you mean? There's something dreadful ahead of us. Something uh, expecting us to drop our guard, waiting for the right moment to strike. Oh, wait, I have to click over here. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I think we should just be vigilant. It's a wasteland. I don't think anything's going to sneak up on us. So we'll just stay vigilant. Let's just hope that keeping our eyes open will be enough to face whatever it is that awaits us if anything's awaiting us we better move while there's still some sunlight okay that's one and ten food and we're back in camp okay you reach the camp after a few hours Goran spots you from a distance and raises his hand in greeting you can see sadness on his face what is going on? It's not easy to say. Goran takes a deep breath. Hector is badly sick. He passed out a few hours ago. He's in his tent now, barely able to breathe. Breath? Okay, whatever. Uh, let's see, I did think he was sick. Let's see, will he survive? The situation is desperate. We have no medicine for this kind of sickness, and he's pretty far gone. You see Jerome coming out of Hector's tent. His face painted with suffering. As far as you know, he and Hector have been good friends for a long time. And Mark, they finally give his name, but we saw him before and he spoke before and... People gather around Hector's tent in silence. Mark finally asks the question on everyone's mind. How is he? In that same moment, Irma comes out of the tent. Jerome sighs. It's over. There was nothing we can do. Oh my god, why didn't he say a thing about his health? You know Hector, he wanted to get away from the planes, and he didn't want anything to stop us. He wanted us to get away with that. Goran stays silent for a moment, then he raises his head and speaks again. I will prepare the body for the funeral. You should go and take some rest. People scatter. People scatter around while Jerome comes near you and sighs again. The two of you are now alone. I met Hector more than 20 years ago. And yet, he said nothing. Not to anyone. Not to me. He just died and left a mess behind him. Tomorrow, we'll need to vote for our new leader. And that is going to be total chaos. Everyone will bicker. And I bet Irma will go crazy again and threaten people while screaming like a lunatic. Here, I'll say. I guess it was technically my loss too. But I can't even remember his voice, so I'm gonna say I'm really sorry for your loss. <clears throat> Thank you. But I've seen more friends die in my time. I'm lucky to be old. But hopefully I won't have to attend another friend's funeral. I think I'm officially losing my voice. I've been doing this for two days and I'm... I need to be alone. Call me when Goran is finished with the pyre. Jerome walks away and sits down outside the camp. I forgot twice to bring myself water because of his voice specifically. After some time passes, you are called by Demetra. Everything is ready for the funeral. Everyone gathers around a big stack of wood. After making sure that all are present, 
Goran throws a lit torch on the pyre, slowly setting it ablaze, shrouding Hector's body in a dance of bright flames. Jerome says nothing, but the sadness on his face is unmistakable. He just stands in front of the pyre and stays there even after everyone else is gone. You're tired, and so you proceed to your tent, hoping to get a decent night's sleep. But a terrible scream wakes you up in the middle of the night. Is that, is that just going to keep going? Okay, it stopped. And I guess that'll be the end of this episode. See us next time. And we're back. Last time there was an attack, but a terrible scream wakes you up in the middle of the night. You see strange lights through the fabric of your tent, and hear the noise of hooves stomping the ground. There are also sounds of gunfire. You are under attack. You know, wait, this is this is a good spot to stop. So, um, this will be where you see us next time. Yeah, you are under attack. And continue. Okay, during the fight, you'll have to combine different ability actions into abilities. Your action pull is de determined by the equipment and skills of your party. Yeah, we, I get it. Okay, you have to combine actions to make an ability. Well, I think it would, might make more sense to say it. Abilities combined to make actions. And gold, silver, bronze. And uh, get the enemy health to zero. Health is up here, morale is down here. Okay, continue. Penalty actions are ones that make you weaker. So you can't really use those. Negative, let's see how we actually use droid turn. Okay, let's. We also have items. I don't think we have any items right now. But we would have. I could. Let me get this out of the way. Okay, smoke grenades, incendiary grenades. Regular brick grenades, survivor bow, compound bow. Huh. Is her bow just much better than mine's? Can we trade? Nope. Okay, let's see. Can't threaten. We can't combine with that. Okay. We can't combine those. What would stealth do? A uh, super stealth. So you increase damage dealt by allies, reduce damage dealt by... Well, you probably guessed this is a tutorial battle, so it might not be a point. Uh, let's see, let's go with... Let's insight. Let's combine that with that one. Okay, modify morale. Do some damage, don't do anything there. Can I drop that? We don't need to do that. Can't do anything there. Okay, let's just go ahead. Wait, get these out of the way. Let me see. Do these combine? No, get out of the way. They don't combine. Um, these two combine. So let me see. Does this one and this one combine? Nope. Okay. We can threaten. Does this combine with anything? Stop that. Huh, it doesn't. Okay, we're just gonna activate this right now. Um. We'll maneuver, we'll aim, and nope, okay. Can I combine with this one, then this one, nope. Okay. Maneuver can't do it by itself, that can't do it by itself, this one could. So we should combine these two. Let's see, we allies morale. Let's go ahead. And then this one to just attack with 12. We did 12 damage. Let me combine these. Nope. It's just getting in the way. Okay, end the turn. Ow, ow. Wait, are we taking no damage? No, we are taking damage. Ouch. They've got some crazy strong weapons and they're... Huh. Might be a strategy not to combine stuff. We're already almost half health. Just end it. Okay, let's see. Could reduce their damage with this. Um, can we threaten them? 
can we combine this thing with anything? Um, you don't have any health recovery things. Let's just, let's just use stuff. Just do it. Um, let's put in a snipe and this thing. Can I combine with this? Nope. Let's see. Damage absorption. We're going to get a super tank mode. With a tiny gun. Yeah, here's where it ends. Zero damage. Ow. Ooh, okay, that one got hit. Okay. You feel weak and aching. You try to crawl on the ground, but each move causes your body to explode in pain. You try to stay awake, but soon your willpower weakens and you pass out. After that, there is only darkness. You don't know how long you stay unconscious. Strange dreams creep into your dormant mind. Dreams of a different place, a different time. You see a shiny tower rising up towards the sky. A piece of technology you've never seen in the white wasteland. Technology belonging to an ancient broken world. Technology bring belonging to an ancient broken world. Hey, wake up. Are you okay? You hear Jerome's voice. You finally realize that you're dreaming, and this sudden realization brings you back to the waking world. Let's see. I know what happened. We were attacked. I'm probably hurt, and I'll probably survive. So how long have I been unconscious? Just a few hours. But don't worry, you didn't miss anything good. You look around. The morning sun blinds you at first, but then you, you're able to see that you and your mates are sitting on the ground, tied up. You're not the only prisoners, as there are other people here that seem to share your situation. Armed bandits are guarding the area. You can see many tents scattered around, so it's difficult to see, assess how many of them are there. <clears throat> Running away from them won't be easy. They have guns and everything else they need to keep us in our place. You will never escape. We tried, but there's too many of them, and they have horses and guns. If they want us alive, I fear we will all soon become slaves. Huh. Now before, I think anything was better than dying. So they have to keep their eyes on more people now, so it shouldn't be hard for us to find an opening. I won't be beaten again just because of you, because one of you wants to do something stupid. They'll beat us all, jo all of us, Joseph. But what do we do? Just wait here and be sold as slaves? Long story short, we tried to run away during the night. They found us and beat us within an inch of our lives. End of story. Um, let's see. No. We'll get our chance. You want some us? Mm, I'll go with this one. We'll get our chance. They can't keep what's on us all day all the time there are too many of us to be easily guarded unless you have a freaking brilliant plan i'd rather i'd prefer not to get beaten again either screw you i'd rather die than be a slave we're leaving i don't know how but we're leaving the stranger smiles slightly sir i'm really curious to see what you what you will do uh, he's obviously evil. I think he's... We're probably going to see him get killed sometime. A bandit approaches you and starts shouting, Shut up, all of you. We're moving now. Prepare yourselves. It's going to be a long walk. You and all the other prisoners start walking, with your hands tied along the bandit's caravan. You're constantly under watch and unable to find a way to break free. Day after day, you become resigned to your fate. The bandits are watching you all the time, and they don't even allow you to talk among yourselves. You barely get to know the ones who share your ordeal. Carlos and April are a couple, and they were in the same group as Joseph when they got attacked and kidnapped. There's a young girl, Ava. She seems sad and never speaks. The only thing you're able to discover is that the bandits killed her family. But finally, after walking for several days through the White Plains, something happens. The bad thing is that it doesn't look like something good. Really? The bad thing is that it doesn't look like something good. Not at all. 
You see three people peacefully approach the bandits. They don't look like common survivors. Even the bandits who assaulted you, despite their abundant resources, are not that well equipped. Polished and shiny weapons. High-tech equipment. All the bandits look at these three people with reverence and awe. You've never seen anything like that in the White Wasteland. I should have brought water. One of the masked soldiers speaks up in a feminine voice. Proceed with the tests, and let's move on. We have no time to waste. I don't remember. Uh, I'm sure they're good. Some of the prisoners are young and healthy. They'll be perfect for your needs. The, wins, the woman slowly faces, turns to face the bandit and stands still for a couple seconds in an intimidating silence. We'll see. They approach you and the other prisoners and start using medical equipment to take some of your blood. They take a sample from each of you. Each one of you. They walk away and after a few minutes they come back. The mysterious woman looks at Goran and Irma, then nods at her two companions. We'll take these two and their children. They're the only ones we're interested in. Do what you want with the others. We have no use for them. <laughs> Excuse me. They walk away, taking Goran, Irma, and their children with them. They never told us how many children they have, though. At least two? Three? Jerome tries to stand up on his feet and protest, but he is kicked in the stomach and falls to the ground. The mysterious strangers leave you with uh, your companions in tow. No, the mysterious strangers leave with your companions in tow. While they dis disappear into the mist, the bandits order you to take get on your feet and start walking. And so you're walking, just like any other day, with armed guards all around you. But then you hear some bandits shout. You turn to see what's happening. At least 30 horsemen are charging the bandits quickly descending from the top of this of a small hill. They're wearing red. These are the red horsemen, raiders and pillagers feared in the entire region. The bandits start shooting at them, but the horsemen rapidly reach your position and be engage your captors in close combat. Jerome lets out a, lets out a shout. Let's out a shout. Yeah. I really should have brought water. Let's go. No. Then he breaks into a sprint. You and the other prisoners attempt to escape while the bandits are too busy worrying about their own lives. As you keep running away from your captors, you hear the sounds of bullets whizzing by you. One of those bullets hits Joseph in the chest and he falls to the ground. How'd they hit him in the chest though? We were running away. April stops running and kneels by her companion's body. Joseph! Joseph, please stand up! And then I, I drag her away like a hero. Oh, I'm guessing she wasn't ahead of me. It's natural. Drag April along with you, away from the body. While you pull April away from the dead body, one of her fa former companion. Oh. While you pull April away from the dead body of her former companion, you hear Carlos's voice. April, run! He's dead. Run! You're still being shot at, but the bullets pierce the snow around you without hitting anyone. You're too far away to be an easy target. You see the entrance of a tunnel ahead of you, and your group runs towards it. Your captors are now far behind, still busy fighting the horsemen. You take a last look behind and see no one coming after you. The tunnel is quite long, but after a few minutes you finally see the light and feel the cold wind coming from the outside. Okay, we're now free. And how long have I been recording? Probably long enough. You are now free and travel the. Uh, you are now free to travel the plane. Use WAS to move the camera or right-click to drag. Use the buttons near the characters down here to talk and whatever else. Let's see. You could heal them if you have healing stuff. Single unit of medicine. Do we have medicine? We have ten medicine. Nice. Let's see. It'll be more effective in combat if they have more health. So yeah, equip companions with, I'm guessing that backpack one for equipping. Okay. So, there's probably still more to the tutorial. 
But um, that could be next time because how long have I been playing? Okay, we'll make it next time. Let's just save the game. And then we'll see you next time. I'll replace this one, yes. Okay, now hopefully I got the sound back. Sound right. Sound correct. Goodbye.